Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring, and my series 10 Paints or Less, in which I attempt to paint things using 10 paints or less. In this particular episode, I'm going to be painting some skeletons. The skeletons in question are the ones from Castle Ravenloft, the board game, which are not the best sculpts in the world, but they're pretty decent. Um, but the methods can be used on any skeletons, so um, the skeleton warband from um, uh, Warhammer Underworlds, for example, from, from Games Workshop. So to start with, what I've done is I've given the model a base coat of skeleton bone, and I have used the uh, spray uh, skeleton bone from Army Painter. And then we have got some Army Painter soft tone here, and we're going to wash the entire model with this. This will um, go into the recesses, and it will make the details on the miniature pop. And you don't need to be too fussy about it, you just need to slosh it all around and make sure it gets into the eye recesses and things like that. And when it's dry, you end up with something like that. And technically, that's already pretty much a, a painted skeleton, but we're going to do a few more uh, layers on it just to, just to improve it slightly. We're going to skeleton bone from the, from the dropper bottle now, and I'm going to mix it with a small amount of Lamium Medium. I'm actually going to do, it, it's about, about a, a two to one mix with Lamium Medium. And I'm just layering this on. Now, when you're doing this, you, you've basically got choices. You can do do one coat of this. Um, you could do two just to layer it up and make it make the colours a little bit more vibrant. Um, or if you don't feel like doing it, you can actually just dry brush the model with skeleton bone um, and not do the layering at all. Um, but you get a slightly dustier finish if you dry brush. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing doing a layer, and I'm going to do two layers. Um, but like I say, you know, do whatever whatever you feel like. The quickest way is obviously just to just to hit it with a dry brush. When you're doing this, just take care with your first coat. You're just trying to get um, a, a coating all over the, the the most raised areas, and then when you do your second coat, um, again, just try to be careful. Try to be neat. Don't go into the recesses of the miniature, because otherwise you undo what you've done with the um with the washes and you end up with something that looks like that uh and again at this point you can leave it at that but we're going to go one one stage further we're going to do a mix of skeleton bone with white scar pretty much a one-to-one -one mix um and we're going to do a dry brush with this so it's a one-to-one -one mix um load the brush up wipe most of the paint off the brush and then we're just going to flick it over the raised details of the skeleton just to just to make the edges pop a little bit more, um, particularly around the face and things like that, just to bring out all of the details. And that will basically finish the actual skeleton. Um, so now we need, to, we need to worry about his shield and his sword and the base. The shield is sort of the, the, the draw factor on this, this miniature. So we're gonna start by, by coating it in uh, the bronze and this needs two coats. Um, I didn't thin it down because it's already quite thin out of the bottle, but it still needs two coats to go on evenly. So just make sure you get a smooth coat. Like I say, we're gonna gonna try and draw attention to this shield more than the sword because the sword is a rubbish bit of sculpting. It looks naff. Okay, so we've got Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to apply this over the front of the shield. At the moment, we're not doing the back of the shield. We're just going to apply the Agrax Earthshade all over the front. Agrax Earthshade will make it look sort of rusty and dingy. Uh, uh, whilst also obviously bringing out the detail as well. And now what I'm using, I'm just using a little bit of white tack to support the model in such a position so that um, it, the, the, the wash doesn't all pool at the bottom of the shield. And then once that's been done, for, I'm, I'm doing three at a time here. So once once it's been done for all of them and it's dry, turn the models over and then Agrax Earthshade on the back of the shield. And it just make sure you get you don't get pooling and things at the bottom. And you get an even an even coverage of the wash. And again, at this point, that looks pretty cool and you could leave it at that. I mean, it looks like a banged up old shield. But we're gonna do a highlight of Retributor armor. Um, not being too heavy with it, just over the over the, the raised details just to give it a little bit of a shine on the edges make it a little bit brighter again and again you could leave it at that stage but we're going to go a little bit further we're going to do a very very minimal shining silver dry brush just on the most raised details and the top edge 
of, of the shield just to give it a, a little bit of sense of a reflective light and again you could leave it at that stage but we're going further still we're going to use some Mephiston red and we're going to paint little triangular sections I have watered and uh, not watered it down I have um, used some Lamian medium here um, it's pretty much a one-to-one -one, and that's just to get a, a smooth flow and uh, a neat coverage you may need to do two two coats um, particularly over the uh, the metallic colors when you're done you have that and then I just want to make that a little bit brighter a little bit uh, stand out a little bit more pop a little bit more so we're using some evil sun scarlet and again we're gonna put some that was a little bit of lamian medium with that just to make it flow and we're going two coats again we're going over the over the red and then the second coat we're just going towards the center of the shield just so that the the most raised part of the dome of the shield is the brightest part of the shield the bit that's furthest outwards now it's good old lead belcher this is the bit where we have to deal with that ghastly sword um, because the sword is not well sculpted you've got two choices you can lavish loads of attention on it and, and paint details on or you can do what I'm doing and hope that the shield draws the the eye of the viewer whilst I just slap a base coat of lead belcher on this um, this sword and then do a couple of washes on it so null oil will be on the handle of the sword and then um, just obviously being a bit careful there and then it's Agrax Earthshade again to do the blade of the sword just to make it look a little bit rusty a little bit dinged up and a little bit old and that's literally all I'm going to do with the sword because, like I say, I'm hoping that the eye of the viewer will be drawn to other elements of the model and not the very badly sculpted sword. We're now going to Mechanica Standard Grey. The reason we're doing that is because the base of the miniature actually has a sculpted rock that the, uh, the skeleton is standing on, so we can't just use the Astro Granite textured paint. So I'm going to paint Mechanica Standard Grey over the, uh, the raised stone. Mechanica Standard Grey is pretty much the closest colour to Astro Granite uh, textured paint that, I, that I'm aware of. Um, it, it's pretty much the same, the same shade, so you can't really tell the difference between them. So I'm very carefully painting the stone, making sure I don't go all over the skeleton's toes and things like that. And then I'm also going to put um, Mechanica Standard Grey around the rim of the base, and that's just so that I don't have to go right up to the edge with the texture paint. Um, which which can be problematic on bases that don't have lips because you don't want the actual texture element to get on the sides of the base so that's what you've got when that's dry and then it's a case of filling in the gaps with the astro granite using a knackered old brush because you don't want to use your best brushes for texture paint um, sloshing it on and pushing it around to cover all of the uh, all of the uh, the areas of the base that aren't currently painted and you end up with something like that and then it's to all through and gray just to do a quick dry brush over the top to pick out the details and then with that dry brush done um, we just need to put a, a coating of abaddon black on the base and that's what you end up with um very quick um very 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 effective i mean it's not the best painting in the world but it gets them to the table quickly and you can actually be quicker than i have been you can literally just do um the base skeleton bone then the soft tone wash and then a dry brush and then just paint the sword and the shield um in dingy old metal colors wash those as well and and, and that will you know you'll, you'll get a, f a finished product that you can put on the table that will look quite decent one of the good things about skeletons is they are incredibly easy to paint but anyway this is what i have done with mine um i hope somebody has found this useful as always please leave your comments and queries below i will do my best to respond to everybody like i always do uh, and that's it from me um until next time bye bye everyone bye bye